Hi, my name is Jerry Wise, and I'm the director for the Center for Self-Differentiation at Family Tree Counseling Associates on the north side of Indianapolis, Indiana, in Carmel, Indiana. I'm a relationship expert and a family expert. I provide professional services out of my office and online. And having worked with clients for over 35 years, I continue to use a way of thinking that helps clients resolve deadlocks in their healing process. And this video is entitled, I want to let go, but I can't, which is a common problem that we face in uh, working with our own recovery and our own growth. And often we get stuck in that dilemma. Have you ever wondered why when you really want to let something go and you genuinely don't want to feel this way, you can't? Or it doesn't seem like you can. You just can't seem to get beyond the emotional stuckness that seems more logical um, uh, or you can't get beyond the emotional stuckness when it seems more logical to be free of it. It would be better if I were to let this go. It would be better if I were to let them go. Or this issue, or these feelings. And logically, that's what I want to do. But emotionally, I stay stuck. Let me give you an example. I've had a client who has given his permission for me to share some details. The names are changed to protect the identities uh, in this situation. So let's call him Dan, and let's call his ex-wife Carrie. And Dan and Carrie divorced about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe closer to two years. It, it was a painful divorce for Dan, because Dan had found out that while they were trying to heal their marriage, towards the end of their relationship, Carrie was having an affair and didn't say so. It was very painful for Dan because he was very much in love with Carrie and wanted to stay with her. And he made significant progress in emotionally divorcing from Carrie. Um, and remember, there are always two divorces uh, that people have to work with when they get a divorce. One is the legal divorce, and then the second is the emotional divorce. Many spend lots of hours and time and energy on the legal divorce and often lots of money and then spend almost nothing on getting an emotional divorce and then find themselves repeating their patterns again or getting into trouble again with other relationships and can't seem to figure out why. Well, we can do the paperwork, we can do the legal side, but we can't do the emotional side. So emotional divorces are very important if you've had a divorce. And again, just because we are legally divorced doesn't mean we're emotionally divorced. So now Dan has started a new relationship with Danielle, a girlfriend of his whom he likes very much. Danielle has some issues with jealousy and insecurity uh, from her own past. She has an ex-husband that she no longer wants to be with and has been out of that relationship for a while. When alone, and talking with Dan, he reveals he's still angry with Carrie, his ex-wife, and hurt from her leaving him because she didn't, he didn't want to leave. She decided she wanted to leave. And the hurt of an affair that had happened. He says he just wants to let her go. And he's so tired of feeling mad and hurt all the time. And he asked me, Jerry, why can't I let her go? Why can't I let it go? because everything in me wants to. I think it messes my, with my relationship with Danielle. I think it messes with my inner life. Why can't I let it go? And this is what I explain. And I want to show something to you. I call it the 49%, 51% technique. Let me show it to you. I draw that on the board, and when I draw it on the board, we see that the 49% that 
says, I do want to give it up or do want to give, uh, give, give them up. And that's 49%. And then I draw 51% in which I write the words, I don't want to give it up or I don't want to give them up. And I tell them they feel it as though the 49% is 51%. And that the 51% is 49%. And then they ask me, why doesn't it work? Why can't I let go? And so this becomes a problem for them because they believe an illusion or a myth that they have stronger feelings inside to want to let it go than stronger feelings to hold on to it. What I realize is the strength and the desire to hold on to it is stronger than the one to let it go. How do I know this? Because if the desire and strength and will to let it go is 51%, we would let it go. It wouldn't be a problem. It's only a problem because we see it this way only with the illusion, with those numbers backwards. So once they begin to realize and then they begin to own up to the fact, well, you know, you're really right. Uh, I do have, you know, I, in some ways I don't want to let her go. In some, one I, some ways I don't want to let these feelings go. And then they start get on, getting honest with themselves and also what I call reconnecting with their true selves. And once you reconnect with your true self, you then can start to make choices and have freedom to choose things. When you're connected with your neurotic self, meaning a illogical, irrational, I really want to give it up 51% and don't want to give it up 49%, which is irrational, um, belief about yourself, that once we give that up, we're much more able to move forward because we've owned it and we've come to ourselves. If we keep fighting ourselves, then we tend to stay stuck. So what I suggest is with the 51%, um, if we were to switch those numbers and you were to become 51% willing to let it go, my hunch is you know what the upsides would be, right? The upsides would be, oh, I'd get along with Danielle better. I wouldn't feel this anger and pain and hurt. I, I wouldn't have this obsession or thinking about Carrie uh, as much or any longer. You know, we see, we know all the upsides for that. But where I think the real key to breaking the deadlock is Let's go over to the other side, which is 51%, and that's the part that says, I don't want to give it up. I'm not ready to let those feelings go. And so when we're on that side, then I say, what would be the upside of giving that up? You already know. So I ask, what would be the downsides of giving up, letting go of the feelings of anger, hurt, love, whatever they are, for that person, for Carrie. What are the downsides of that? And of course, at first the client says, well, there wouldn't be any downsides. What are you talking about? I'd feel great, it'd be better. Oh, no, no, that's still a buried treasure. It's still a hidden part of your reality and of your truth. We need to explore and find that hidden part. So we begin to explore, if you were to let go of those feelings of hurt and anger towards Carrie, your ex, to move in a better place, how would that be negative for you? And again, it may be a little hard to think that way, but I think it's a very healing way to think. So let me give you some examples. And so if we, I'll get around here where I can read it, if we see the 51% and say, well, if I let that go, uh, what are the downsides that I'm, that I'm unaware of? Well, here's some possibilities. It would be an easy out for a current troubled relationship. I have some problems with Danielle and I'm not sure whether I want to be with her for, or not. So holding on to these feelings could be an out for that relationship because it will blow it up. 
uh, I still have feelings for uh, the Carrie I once knew and loved. I still have those and don't want to give those up. And so the downside would be, gosh, I'd have to let those go. And I might feel abandoned or alone because I felt abandoned when she left. If I give up those feelings, I feel abandoned again. Um, I don't want to lose or let go of what we have or ha had experienced in the past because then that would be a real death of the relationship. Another downside would be it keeps me safe from obsessing about her in a yearning kind of way. And so I obsess in a mad hurt way. I would, if I gave that up and let her go, I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, if I let go of these feelings uh, of, uh, and let go of the 51%, uh, again, I will feel all alone. I may feel abandoned. There may be nobody else for me that I fear. So there's a lot invested in keeping in on this side of the column versus this side of the column. But we believe we have a stronger side of the column over here and can't figure out why we can't let it go when really it's this side over here that we can't seem to let go. So. Let me recap for you what I wanted to share with you today. The key points that we've heard in uh, have, have a hard time letting go. And also understanding ourselves, we can find a path to letting go. M number one, most of us confuse our desire to let go as more potent or stronger than our desire to hang on. This confuses us and does not allow us to find a path forward. Second, embracing emotionally, embracing emotionally our stronger desire to not let go uh, gets us more aligned with ourselves that we can have the freedom and make choices to unlock ourselves and use that freedom to move beyond it. Because again, if we're locked in something we don't see or don't realize about us realistically, we stay stuck. Once I admit and say, you know, I'm not ready to love her, let her go. I really do love her. Once we admit that, put that on the bathroom mirror and read it every day, which I've had some people do, so they can really connect with that side, it begins to lessen and it begins to go away and the power of it begins to decrease because they've been so running from it. And you don't have to run from it, you can run towards it and then through it. Uh, thirdly, seeing the downsides of letting go also reveals ways we can change so that letting go is easier and faster. The downsides of something good provides more insight than the upsides of something good. And again, the downsides of something good provides more insight than the upsides of something good. We almost always know the upsides. We don't really realize the downsides. Or some will say the secondary payoff. Or some will say the unconscious payoff. However you want to look at it, that's important information for us to explore because it allows us to get over these things quicker and move more quickly into being able to let go. While it may be difficult for Dan to share with Danielle that he is embracing his feelings about Carrie, his ex-wife, which is not always good news for a girlfriend who wants you to let go of your feelings up for an ex-wife, whether negative or positive, though sometimes they want you to keep your negative feelings because they feel it keeps them safe. What they don't realize is that girlfriends who are dating uh, guys or guys who are dating girls who still have a connection with their exes through either negative feelings or positive feelings does not bode well for a nude relationship. We need to learn to get become neutral. Um, 
many would not understand this or would certainly feel threatened by this if you went to her and said, hey, I'm trying to embrace my feelings about how I feel about Carrie. And of course, Danielle might freak out or be upset over it. But Dan can work on this himself. Working with Danielle, uh, she came to see the value and importance of Dan working this way. She already knew he was stuck in his feelings for Carrie. She already sensed and knew that. She just didn't want it to be there. Of course, she was first just wanting him to get rid of those feelings and stop letting Carrie matter to him so much. Either way. And lastly, using the 49-51% approach can help you with a number of dilemmas and emotional deadlocks. If you want to learn more about getting emotionally unstuck and using a family systems approach to recovery and healing, please give me a call or write me an email. I'll respond to you. You can learn more about me at www.familytreecounseling.com. You can also see my contact information on your screen. I have clients all over the United States and in foreign countries, from Moscow, Dubai, all over, English-speaking uh, folks who want to get some additional help or have a hard time finding good professionals around them. You can contact me uh, for Skype or FaceTime professional help, or you can join me at my office or, on, uh, or online, either way. Join our Family Tree Counseling channel on YouTube. I hope that you will share my videos with your social media. Uh, they're free and we try to provide good information for those who are hurting. I want to thank you today for listening and have a great day.